Good evening, folks. So tonight we're going to talk about punishment. So we've talked about kind of uh, reinforcement, uh, which is either reward or taking something away. But tonight we're going to talk about punishment. And we're going to do so in the same way that we talked about reinforcement. Um, we'll talk about that later. So punishment have the opposite effects of reinforcement. These consequences make the target behavior less likely to occur in the future because you don't want to get hit, you don't want to go to your room, you don't want to, um, you know, have some negative consequence happen. So we're going to look at it in the same way as we looked at reinforcement. So there's a positive punishment and a negative punishment. So I know this is difficult to understand because we often think of reinforcement as good and therefore positive and punishment as bad, therefore negative, but we have to kind of get rid of the connotations of good and bad that go with positive and negative. So both reinforcement and punishment both have positive and negative aspects or methods. So with positive punishment, you add something unpleasant or adversive. You spank the child. You send them to their room. You make them do extra homework. But a negative punishment is you take something pleasured, pleasurable or pleasant or desired away. So minus is the negative here. No TV time. Um, you know, your freedom is restricted, so you have to go and sit in the corner. So there's positive reinforcement, or punish, positive punishment, sorry, where you add something, and negative punishment where you take away. So think of positive and negative as addition and subtraction rather than good or bad. So there. Positive does not mean good or desirable. Negative does not mean bad or undesirable. <clears throat> so when is this effective? It actually works best in natural settings when we, encountering, when we encounter punishing consequences from acts such as re reaching into a fire. Um, so in that case, operant conditioning also helps us avoid danger. So we're punished by the world through pain and hardship. Um, punishment's also effective when we try to artificially create punishing consequences for other choices. These work best when consequences happen as they do in nature. So when the severity of punishment is not as helpful as making the punishments immediate and certain. Um, so there's a problem with this, though. Punished behaviors may restart when the punishment is over. So learning is not lasting. Instead of learning behaviors, the, chi the child may learn to discriminate among situations and avoid those in which punishment might occur. That's what I did. So instead of behaviors, the child might learn an attitude of fear or hatred, which can interfere with learning. This can generalize to a fear slash hatred of all adults or many settings. So as teenagers, I'm sure you are very aware of the rebelliousness of the uh, sort of resentment of authority that typically comes with being a teenager. Maybe you don't. I'm overgeneralizing here. But I know in my own personal experience, um, when I was punished by teachers or my parents, that didn't make me not do the action. It made me sort of... Uh, do the action under their radar so that I didn't get punished anymore. So I was avoiding the punishment, not avoiding doing the behavior. Because I was smarter than them. At least I thought I was. So physical punishment models aggression and control as a method of dealing with problems. So when we talk about observational learning in a couple days, you'll see that if you uh, use violence and, and force as a method of problem solving, your child learns that. But then later on in their life, they will probably, or they at least they have a more uh, probable uh, outcome of being violent and aggressive themselves. So don't think about the beach. Don't think about the waves, the sand, the towels and sunscreens, the sailboats and the surfboards. Don't think about the beach. Are you obeying the instruction? Would you obey this instruction more if you were punished for thinking about the beach? I don't think so. So punishing focuses on what not to do, which does not guide people to a desired behavior. Even if undesirable behaviors do stop, another problem behavior may emerge that serves the same purpose, especially if no replacement behaviors are taught and reinforced. So being the crafty little guy that I was, I would just figure out how not to get punished. I wasn't figuring out how not to do the behavior. I didn't care. In fact, I would do the behavior over and over again just to sort of have my little... Uh, my little say and have a little bit of power myself. So the lesson that we can order that we can learn here is in order to teach the desired behavior, reinforce what's right more often than punishing what's wrong. 
And I know as teachers these days, that's kind of what we're taught, um, is to not so much focus on the negative, but focus more on the positive and try to reinforce that rather than punishing the negative. So there's, uh, there's more effective forms of operant conditioning, such as the power of rephrasing. So positive punishment. You're playing video games instead of practicing the piano, so I'm justified in yelling at you. It's positive. Yelling is positive punishment. Negative punishment. You're avoiding practicing, so I'm turning off your game, taking something away. Negative reinforcement. I will stop staring at you and bugging you as soon as I see that you are practicing. See how that's kind of different there? You're taking something away. Positive reinforcement. After you practice, then we'll play a game. So rather than taking the game away, which would be negative punishment, you're using it as a reward. So if you practice, then we'll play a game. Not, you're not practicing, so you're not allowed to play the game. See how that works? Uh, maybe you'll find this valuable in your own life someday. I know I do. Um, so if we look at this, uh, there, there's different types of consequences. So let's, let's look at this here. So when you add stimuli, positive reinforcement, you get candy. Um, it, you're supposed to sh uh, strengthen the target behavior, right? Um, and also when you take something away, like stopping yelling, that's supposed to strengthen the target behavior. So positive punishment, you get spanked. That's supposed to reduce the target behavior. And the same with negative punishment. You take something away, um, and that reduces target behavior. So reinforcement is designed to strengthen target behavior, and punishment is designed to reduce target behavior. Now, target behavior can be anything that you're trying to strengthen or reduce. But if you look here, there's some similarities. So, But they're reversed. So positive reinforcement uses desirable stimuli and so does negative punishment. But the difference is you give them that in reinforcement and you take it away in punishment. And uh, in the same way, this unpleasant stimuli, positive punishment, you get spanked, and then negative reinforcement is uh, you take something away that was unpleasant. So both deal with this unpleasant phenomenon or stimuli. So different methods um, the reinforcement method has been shown time and time again to be much more effective at strengthening behavior um, and actually even reducing target behavior. It's not to say that we don't need punishments for our actions, but uh, the type of punishment that has become you know, commonplace has to do with force and violence, and it's not exactly uh, effective. So uh, we apply this in parenting. So rewarding small improvements toward desirable behaviors works better than expecting complete success. It also works better than punishing problem behaviors. Giving in to temper tantrums stops them in the short run, but increases them in the long run because you give in to them. Self-improvement. You can apply this to yourself. Reward yourself for steps you take towards your goals. As you establish good habits, then make your rewards more infrequent or intermittent. All right. So that's all we'll do today. Ladies and gentlemen, have a good evening.